the United States is working painstakingly on the creation of a sixth-generation fighter. Representatives of the U.S. Military Department recently started talking about literally magical sixth-generation aircraft. Jungle. Will Roper, American physicist, U.S. foreign policy strategist, and a procurement assistant to the U.S. Air Force Secretary called the creation of FAXX magic. Let's figure it out. Let's start with the strategy, which is completely unusual here. And then, we gradually move on to technology. The NGAD, or Next Generation Air Dominance Program, also known as FAXX, has been developed by the U.S. Navy Command for several years. The U.S. Military Department even created a separate office as part of the program. The goal of the project is to create a carrier-based fighter that will replace the F-A-18F Super Hornet 4th Generation Fighter Attack Aircraft and the EA-18G Growler Electronic Warfare Aircraft, which are about to receive a new electronic warfare system. Both the Super Hornet and the Growler are in service with the U.S. Navy and Australian Air Force. These are excellent planes, but they are gradually becoming obsolete. Progress does not stand still. As part of the secret next-generation air dominance program, a sixth-generation multi-purpose fighter bomber is being developed for the U.S. Air Force. However, the U.S. Navy could get super fighters even before the Air Force. This is an interesting detail if you remember that stealth is not a key factor for aircraft carrier aviation. Radar stealth is less important for the Navy because carrier-based fighters are not designed to penetrate enemy airspace. However, stealth is a key requirement for the Air Force missions. So the nature of the combat missions of the Navy fighters and the Air Force fighters are different, which means that these aircrafts demand different requirements. For analysts who are joking about the uncertainty. In reality, it is about technological flexibility. The course of the next generation air dominance program and the technical nuances of magical aircraft are strictly classified. However, Roper named the holy trinity of this technological flexibility. Digital engineering, software, and an open architecture of digital space that simulates real conditions. Of course, it is only open for a limited number of persons. This seems to be a response to the Russian concept of critical technologies which creates Zircon hypersonic cruise missiles. In reality, Americans are great executives and experts in project management. Consider the creation of the Boeing T-7 Red Hawk trainer when they implemented a unified virtual simulation process. The model is first created and tested in virtual space, and only after that it is embodied in hardware. The same approach is applied to the creation of the sixth generation fighter and a multi-stage competition similar to the one used to create a reusable manned spacecraft commissioned by NASA is intended to spur and speed up the process. Remember Rogozin joking about the trampoline? Elon Musk made a good trampoline, right? The Americans launched Dragon 2 before the head of Roscosmos released his next poetic opus about love and Russia. By the way, after the success with their spacecraft, the SpaceX Corporation may get some contract for the construction of new models of military aviation equipment. As for the competitive race under the Next Generation Air Dominance Program, so far other leading U.S. manufacturers such as Lockheed, Boeing, and Northrop Grumman Corporation are participating in it. Military analysts noticed Lockheed Martin's involvement in a large and expensive project when the company reported a doubled cash turnover. Let us remind you that it was the Skunk Works division of Lockheed Martin that developed the fifth-generation F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II fighters. Therefore, there is no doubt about the qualifications of these guys. Boeing Company also needs no introduction. After their recent setback in the space industry with Musk's Dragon 2 ahead of the competition, the company's engineers wanted satisfaction. Their huge experience in the design of supersonic and unmanned aircraft only strengthens Boeing's position. As for Northrop Grumman Corporation, they were the first to introduce the flying wing scheme. The A-2 Spirit Bomber is an iconic aircraft of our time. The RQ-4 Global Hawk drones are also in service with the United States. 
and the possibility of remote control is a fundamental criterion of the sixth generation fighter. Moreover, this function should be combined with the ability of a pilot to fly in a manual mode. This means that Northrop Grumman Corporation is also not a random participant in the program. Did these three industrial monsters manage to satisfy the demands of the military? It's time to talk about the rest of the main criteria that sixth generation fighters must meet. Ultimate Stealth Above All This is based on Northrop Grumman's stealth technology. There are two tactics for overcoming enemy air defenses in the modern world, by means of stealth or by means of supersonic speed. Americans prefer stealth, while Russians prefer speed. This was the case up to and including the fifth generation of fighters. But the sixth generation is turning the game around. Apparently, the states will set the rules of the new game. The Russians, in response, claim the possibilities to modify the Su-57 to the level of the sixth generation in the future. One should be skeptical about these statements, because Russia has neither financial, nor intellectual, nor industrial opportunity to launch a project from scratch. It only remains to talk about what is there. Another criterion for the sixth generation is efficiency in all flight modes, from subsonic speed to hypersonic and unmanned flight. The Americans claim that the maximum speed of the fighter will exceed 5M. The flight duration will be up to 50 hours in subsonic unmanned cruising mode. In supersonic cruising mode, the combat radius will be 1600 kilometers. This is where conflicts between the existing technologies emerge. The fact is that it is possible to remain invisible at a relatively low speed. Remember how Matthias Rust freely crossed the border of the USSR? and landed his Cessna 172 Skyhawk near the Kremlin in 1987, the infrared spot of a fighter reaches the size of an aircraft during the afterburner, which makes it visible to enemy radar. In addition, the stealth aircraft has smooth outer contours, with a minimum of sharp edges and no vertical tail. So far, there is not a single hypersonic object in the world without a vertical tail, which stabilizes an object on the move at super speeds. This is probably why the ability to change the shape of the aircraft is another important feature of the sixth generation of fighters. It turns out that a fighter must have two features, be able to remain invisible and contain the potential for unprecedented acceleration at the same time. Kind of a wolf in sheep's clothing, really. Now let's talk about the materials. An airplane is not a rocket that flies one way. Therefore, the outer plating must calmly and repeatedly withstand hypersonic loads. When materials change mechanical properties, melt or soften, super-sensitive electronics should also be placed under the plating, and high temperatures are not recommended for it. Without modern avionics, the fighter would be blind and vulnerable. In addition, the concept of modern air warfare involves the constant interaction of the aircraft with maneuvering objects around it which provide it with cover and coordination. Roper did not disclose the technical details of the new aircraft, but simply called all the know-how magic. Weapons raise no less questions. It is known that the FAXX will be equipped with a directed energy weapon, a laser. This is indirectly confirmed by public information from the U.S. Air Force Research Laboratory. However, not a single characteristic of the laser gun is given. Wasn't it too early for the Americans to announce a revolution in aircraft construction? No, it wasn't. First, a real aircraft should appear after 2030. Secondly, the successful testing of the prototype gives the right to request funding and plan the further development of the next generation air dominance project. What Roper could not keep silent about was the business model of the project, and it deserves special attention because it is a real breakthrough in the American tradition of project management. The bottom line is this. At a certain stage, all the developers of the sixth generation fighter will unite into one structure. This will greatly reduce the cost of the project and improve the communication of specialists. Participating companies will not have to build their own flying prototype. Engineers from all companies will join forces at the stage of digital design and virtual assembly. This business model will operate right up to physical implementation and production of a prototype. Incredible innovation! Previously, companies did not seek to share their own know-how with competitors, albeit in the interests of the safety of their home country. 
Such synergy can deliver the highest results and the most unexpected technical know-how in the fields of materials, avionics, propulsion, and weapons. By the way, which engine lifted the first prototype into the sky is still classified as secret. But sixth-generation fighters are not only characterized by stealth technologies, but also by a power plant that accelerates the aircraft to incredible speeds and allows maneuvering in several planes using a controlled thrust vector. Being as fast as a cruise missile and as invisible as the stealth at the same time is a task that is still unsolvable for one company, especially when it comes to a brand new unit. This kind of work takes 20 years, but if the process is well-funded and the best engineers from the best companies are involved, then the time frame will surely be shortened.